Let's talk about how to invest like the rich. I'm super excited about this video because you've probably heard of the saying, wealth is controlled in the hands of the few. Everyone's heard that. But what you might not have known about is how this is actually done step by step. So what you do with the information contained in this video is totally up to you. You can take it and hate the rich or you can take it and become the rich. It's totally up to you. But here's a quick backstory. Morgan Stanley reported that their wealth management clients, that is clients of theirs who are really wealthy, whose wealth they are managing for them, have about $68 billion of securities-based, non-mortgage, and other special types of loans. And that number is actually twice as much as it was just five years ago. Bank of America reported that they have $62.4 billion of securities-based loans. And that begs the question, why are the wealthy borrowing money? If they already have and make a lot of money, why do they need to borrow more money? And the answer to that question is fascinating because this is a technique that allows them to control this wealth without actually selling their wealth in the first place. And they do this by borrowing against their assets. And that allows them to borrow money to pay for their lifestyle without having to sell those underlying assets in the first place. And that is how generational wealth is passed down from family to family, and that is how some of the most powerful and wealthiest families in America have been created. Now, I just wanna thank whoever commented on my last video asking me to elaborate on this question because I thought it was a really cool question. And the best part about this question is that the answer to this question applies to everyone. You do not have to be rich to make a profit from knowing this information. It applies to everyone. The unfortunate sad thing is that this is not taught in school, but it's still an important part of building generational wealth. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how it's done step by step. I'm super excited, so let's begin. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well, come for the finance, and stay for more finance. When I first started investing, one of the biggest questions I had besides what should I invest in is when should I sell it? When should I sell any investment? And that's because when we think about traditional investing, whether it's buying stocks, real estate, or crypto, and other words I want YouTube to pick up on so it can recommend my videos, is that we think about holding on to them for a few years, maybe a few decades, and when we're ready to retire as millionaires somewhere on an island, we think about selling those investments to pay for our lifestyle. That is the traditional path to wealth that I learned about as a beginner investor. Well, now that I'm still a beginner investor, and I've met a lot of people that are wealthier and smarter than me, I've learned that that is not how real wealth is controlled in this world. And I wanna share that technique with you now so you can think like the rich, because the idea is very simple. The premise goes something like this, buy, borrow, die. So let's talk about the first one, buy. In traditional finance speak, this phase is sometimes called the accumulation phase. And this is where we're told to do the whole go to school, get a degree, get a high paying career, save your money, buy up assets. This is where most of us will spend the majority of our lives in this accumulation phase. But now let's get a little bit more specific and talk about all the different assets we can buy and what they actually do. I like to classify most investments under the big three, real estate, stocks, and crypto. I know there's a ton of other assets out there, but these are the three most popular ones. Each of these assets represent a different benefit in relation to the buy, borrow, die strategy, which I'll talk about in just a second. Now, when I started making money here on YouTube, I was going very cash heavy. Part of that was because I wasn't sure if I was gonna continue making money, and the other part was because I had to pay a lot in taxes. But I also knew if I kept this cash, it would be losing value thanks to the government inflating the monetary supply. So I knew I had to park it somewhere, which is why I bought a house this year, which is weird considering that I've made a video about how owning your house is not the best investment you can make. And this is still true because an asset is something that pays us money, whereas a liability is something that costs us money. And even though I paid for this house 100% cash and I bought it outright, I still have to pay property taxes, insurance, utilities, a lot of other monthly expenses that still drain money, which still classifies it as a liability. It only becomes an asset once you put it to use. But having said that, real estate is arguably one of, if not the best asset, 
in this strategy. This is because it can cash flow if I was to rent it out. It's a stable preserver of value. I could use it as a tax write-off, but most importantly is that I could borrow money against it. The rich think about stocks in the exact same way. For example, this is my stock portfolio with Robinhood that I've been investing consistently inside of since 2014. Oh, Andre, Robinhood again? Leave Brittany alone. So I buy my stocks and I invest in them thinking like the rich, knowing that someday this portfolio will be worth millions of dollars and that it will pay me cash every month from dividends or I could make money by borrowing against it. Now I buy cryptos thinking the exact same way. I buy stable <laughs> blue chip Bitcoin and Ethereum cryptos knowing that someday this portfolio will be worth millions of dollars and instead of selling them, I will again borrow against them. This is the buy phase and it is the most important one and a lesson and a takeaway is that the rich do not sell, they accumulate. This is the hardest phase to do. This is where most of my YouTube channel exists in the accumulation phase to help people get through this point because it's where the saying, your first million dollars is the hardest comes from because it really is, it takes the longest. But if you're watching YouTube channels like mine, the nerdy finance stuff, you will eventually get there. And once you do, that's where things get really interesting because the next phase, instead of selling their assets and getting hit with capital gains taxes, the rich will just borrow money. Let me just give you the overall explanation of how this technique works and then I'll show you some examples with different assets. So with stocks, for example, you can do this technique through something called an SB lock or SPLOCK, which stands for a securities backed line of credit. This allows the asset holder, in this case, the assets are securities, which is just fancy speak for stocks, stock portfolio like mine, to access anywhere between 50 to 100% of its cash value at some special interest rate, which is usually very low because this loan is using these assets as collateral, which is fancy for better have my money or else these assets get liquidated, which is fancy for they're just gonna get sold. So the rich will use asset debt and the poor will use credit card debt. The reason credit card debt is for the poor is because of high interest rates. The reason interest rates are so high with credit cards is because the people lending us money are taking on a huge amount of risk if we default on our loans. Because if we choose not to pay them back, they get nothing in return. Sure, they can ruin our credit card history, they'll annoy us with phone calls, but if we choose not to pay them, they will get nothing in return. And in exchange, they charge us a sky high interest rate of 20 plus percent, which is almost impossible to beat in the open market. So instead, the rich will take out an asset-backed loan with a far lower interest rate. And doing it this way, they can do something called interest rate arbitrage. And the idea behind this is to borrow money at a lower interest rate than the rate at which our stocks and other investments will grow by. So for example, let's say you were investing $100,000 in your brokerage and it was making you 10% per year. Now, what you could do is you could borrow another $100,000 at 2% and you take that money and invest it. So now you're investing $200,000. And since it's only costing you 2% per year or just $2,000, technically that $100,000 is making you $10,000, which means you're getting an extra $8,000 for free. Take that strategy, multiply it by infinity, and you can see how you've created the infinite money glitch with millions and millions of dollars. But there is a downside. And the downside is if something awful happens like the Roni Rona and the value of your portfolio goes down by half, and now it's worth $100,000 instead of 200,000, you still technically owe that $100,000. The value of your loan does not fluctuate in relation to the value of your assets. And so what could happen is, since a lot of these brokerages have margin minimums, that money could get called away and you could lose everything. Remember the Archego story that came out this year about the wealthy family that lost billions of dollars? That's because they were doing this, except they were over leveraged to an insane degree. And when the value of their portfolio dropped, 
all of these lenders were like, hey, uh, can we get our money back? But if you do this carefully, then you can actually leverage your assets and have them grow at a higher interest rate than the interest rate of your loan. And it's a very powerful technique, but that's with stocks. You can also do this with real estate through something called a HELOC or a home equity line of credit. I did this with my dad, by the way, because my dad built some equity in his house, we both physically went to the bank and we were like, hi, Mr. Banker, because my dad owns a part of his house, could we pretty please borrow some money? And the banker's like, sure, sign this document that says if you don't pay me back, I'm gonna take your house away. My dad was like, all right. And he gave him $40,000 at a 2% interest rate, which was great because then my dad paid off all of his higher interest rate loans, like auto loans and credit card debt. And this is a really cool interest arbitrage technique that anyone can use of any income level. And bankers love real estate backed loans even more than securities backed loans because stocks fluctuate up and down in value and it's harder to predict their future value in comparison to real estate, which is a lot more stable. But you can also do this with crypto. Companies like BlockFi do this already. By the way, if you haven't already, go get up to $250 worth of free Bitcoin with this BlockFi link right here, blockfi.com forward slash Andre, shameless plug. Crypto companies arguably have some of the best incentives in the world as far as low interest rates and qualifications. The only downside is because crypto is so volatile, you have to be careful. Because it goes up and down in value, your money could get margin called away and you could lose everything. The higher the risk, the higher the reward, but your interest rate really depends more so on how much money you're gonna give to the banks. And the more money you have, the more incentive they have to lend to you. So if you wanna do this yourself, just Google around and see what different banks and different platforms are offering in terms of interest rates and what incentives they give. I can't give any specific recommendations because this video is not sponsored by anyone. If anyone wants to sponsor this video, feel free. Now, the last phase is pretty self-explanatory, but there is a catch. And this is what keeps the rich generationally rich. Once you buy, borrow, buy, this is when you pass off your wealth to your family. I actually did a video about this, about trusts and how you can put your assets into a trust and how you can just give it to your family upon death. It was around the time of Halloween and I thought, wow, this is a great subject matter. People are gonna love this. It's very spooky and it's about money. And no one watched that video. <laughs> I don't blame them because it was very complicated. It was very in depth. And it basically talks about how you could put your assets into a trust and how your family can inherit it at a stepped up cost basis. So what this basically means is that instead of your family inheriting your assets at your cost basis, which is of course gonna be lower, they inherit your assets at the cost basis that is at the time of your death. So whatever your assets are worth, your stocks, your crypto, your real estate, at the time of them receiving it is what their new cost basis is. And remember, the taxes are between what you bought at and what you sell at. But if they inherit your investments, then their new cost basis will be valued at whatever the investments are valued at at the time of your death. And so you've effectively artificially closed that tax gap, which means if they choose to sell their assets at the time of your death, they will pay no taxes whatsoever. But of course, they won't sell those assets because they do the exact same strategy, buy, borrow, die. And if the rich ever need to buy something fancy like a yacht, an airplane, or an island, all they have to do is just approach a bank and be like, hi, Mr. Bank, I have $100 million worth of assets. I don't wanna sell this to you, but can I pretty please take out a small loan of a million dollars at a really low interest rate? They get the money, they can buy whatever they want, which they can then pay off, or you know what, they could borrow and not pay it off and then die. <laughs> that is how that works. And by the way, anyone can do this with any income. Because the question is, well, Andre, how much money do I have to make in order for this to make sense for me to do? And Here's the answer. It depends. And it works best when there's an expectation of inflation, which is right about now. All of us are expecting inflation to go up. And that's why in the first part of the video, I said the amount of money that's being borrowed has doubled in the last five years because the rich are expecting inflation to grow at a faster rate than the rate at which they could borrow money. And so what are they doing? They're borrowing money and buying more assets and or more stuff with. And the other thing it really depends on is your financial situation. In traditional finance, there's sort of a chain of command, a money ladder, a flowchart, if you will, of steps you have to take first before considering 
doing something like this. And it goes something like this. Step one, build your emergency fund of three to six months. This is how much money it costs for you to be you. Save up six of those and move on to step two. Some people say skip this step if you already have a lot of assets because you can always sell them and use that to pay off expenses, but totally up to you. Step two is to open up your 401k with your company and get it up to the company match. This is free money. Every dollar you put in, your company puts in. Just match it to the max and nothing more. Move on to step three, which is to focus on maxing out your Roth IRA. Once you've done that, go back into your company 401k and match that out. Just match that out, max that out, and just invest the rest of the money there. That's the first four steps. The fifth step is to finally open up a taxable brokerage account. Put money in there and that's the money that you use to borrow against. You don't wanna leverage your tax advantaged accounts because there could be penalties, so don't do that. If you're doing it with stocks, that is SB lock or the margin loan. If you're doing it with real estate, that is the HELOC. And if you're doing this with crypto, that is crypto borrow or whatever special name those companies give it. By the way, this flow chart goes way deeper than any of these steps that I just gave you. So I'll give you a cheat sheet link down below where you can reference it. It is fascinating. Some people hear this stuff and they get really angry at rich people, which doesn't make much sense to me. But at the end of the day, you can't hate the player, you gotta hate the game. But instead of hating the game, just learn the game's rules, learn how to play the game, and learn to love the game. Because I think the real reason we're all angry is because this stuff is just not taught to us in school. But now you know, buy, borrow, and before you die, invite me to your yacht parties so we can nerd out about money and have fun. Love you, thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you back here on Monday and Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. Don't forget to get that free Bitcoin money from BlockFi. Don't forget to get that two free stocks from Webull. Sign up to my Patreon. Love you, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.